welcome to this week's episode of Ask Tom. Now, today's question did not come through the SpeakPipe app. This question actually came in by email, and it's asked by a gentleman by the name of Jim. So let's find out what Jim has to ask. Jim wrote, do you think it would be a good idea to start doing a weekly two-minute video on YouTube and try to build an audience that way? Larry, my figure, ran for president in 2012, and no, he did not get elected. You would be surprised at the number of people that really wanted to vote for Larry, and no, I am not kidding. How do you set it up so that people can subscribe to the video feed and see it when it comes out? The wide-ranging disapproval of our government could give my new campaign a lot of juice. And then he shared some pictures of his figures. Okay, Jim, let's take this from the start. Would it be a good idea to start a weekly two-minute video on YouTube? The first thing you have to keep in mind is that tons of video, I forget how many hours, but thousands and thousands of hours of video get uploaded to YouTube every minute. That's a lot of content. It's amazing the number of people that are on the internet. There's like 73 million people on the internet. And I recently saw a graphic, if I can find it, I'll link to it below this, where it talked about the amount of data, the amount of content that is uploaded every single minute of the day. It, it blows your mind. There's no way anybody can see it all. Does that mean this isn't a good idea? No, it's actually a very good idea, but you need to make sure the content is solid. And that means don't just do a video for the sake of doing a video. Create a script. Hone it a little bit. Make it the best material you can. And when you put it up on the web, you want to be very, very proud of it. You want to make it shareable. And that's not easy to do because I put out a lot of content. And you know how much of it gets shared? Very little. Yep, very little of it actually gets shared. You know, once in a while, somebody will share something, a tweet that I make or, or a video or something, but it doesn't get shared that much. Making something that is really good and shareable, and it has to be shareable if it's going to go viral, uh, it's, it's hard to do. And once you put up a video, you can't just stop. I mean, you've got to promote that video. You've got to, you know, let people know that it's there. And I'll give you an example of this. We did Mayor Ventriloquist Radio. And our first episode, we ended up with well over a thousand hits. And then the second episode, we ended up with, you know, I guess it was just over a thousand hits. And then the third episode, we stopped promoting it as much. And we saw the numbers go down. And we still have a very loyal following. And that's great. But, you know, to really get people behind something, to really get them to to know about it, you've got to constantly put it in front of them. And you can't do it as, hey, look at me, look at me. You, you've got to kind of come in through the side door. You've got to make this stuff just so good that other people want to share it. So that's the first tip. Make sure if you put it up that it's going to be good. And know that if you just put it up weekly, you've got to be consistent with it because this stuff doesn't happen overnight. I mean, to build an audience takes sometimes years. I mean, literally can take years. So if you're going to do something, ask yourself, can I see myself doing this, you know, three years, four years down the road? And I know you're saying, well, but the elections, yeah, I, I know. But if you're going to do it, you've got to do it on a consistent basis. Otherwise, you're going to lose all the effort you put into it when you start it. The second thing that I want to want to talk to you about is you, you've you've got that 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 idea of the government. And yes, with disapproval, you could go viral if the content is good and you make it shareable. But when you promote it, make sure that you, you know, get it in front of people who are in the media. Because when people who are in the media see it and they put it on a major website like the Huffington Post website, you can go viral in a little bit of no time. I know people who have hit, you know, viral videos where they've gone, you know, two million downloads in a day and a half, two days, which, you know, just blows your mind. But then how do you capitalize on that? And that's where most people fall down because they don't think what would happen if this went viral. So, how do you get them to subscribe to your feed? Well, if you're doing YouTube, there is a subscription button on your channel. 
And I don't know if you've ever watched any YouTube videos where they have a little, hey, if you liked our video, subscribe, or if you liked our video, click the thumbs up. Maybe I'll put them on this video. I actually have little jingles that kind of promote that stuff. Click that thumb and say you like my video. Please don't let me have to get down on my knees. One more like, one more like is all that I need. Do it now. So if you like my video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe. Give us thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. I don't use them very often because, you know, I, I just don't. But uh, so, so have that, encourage people to subscribe to your channel. When they subscribe to your channel, if they have a YouTube account, they can do that. Then you'll find that you know they'll start getting notices when you put out videos. Another thing to do is to make sure you have a central hub, which is a website. Okay, You need a website. You need some place to drive these people to. Otherwise, they're watching you on other social media, and then they drift on to watch something else, and they forget all about you. So you want to drive them to your website and have a reason to drive them to your website. Maybe it's a, a campaign poster for Larry, or maybe it's uh, you know Larry's platform, you know, top 10 things that Larry's going to do when he gets into office and have it as a downloadable one sheet. And when you get them there, you can subscribe them through an opt-in. Now, an opt-in is getting into autoresponders. Uh, that's a whole nother question. If you want me to go into it, you know, go ahead and email me again and ask me about autoresponders and I'll talk to you about them. But you want to get people to your website and on a list. Now, uh, WordPress, actually, if you get Jetpack, they have a subscription form so people can subscribe just to your blog. Now, you don't get those emails, but anything you put out on your blog can then be sent out to everybody who subscribed, and it's automatically handled for you. Uh, we use that on the Learn Ventriloquism site. When you sign up for the blog updates, it's on the blog. It's right there at the top. Um, that all hand is handled through WordPress. So when people you know, get notice that, hey, Tom's put out another video or another blog article, you know, here's the link and here's a little blurb about it. We do the same thing over at Mayor Studios. Um, so that's very easy to set up. And if you don't have a WordPress site, you're going to have difficulty doing that. But that's when you use an opt-in and then you're going to have to, you know, create what they call email broadcasts that you would send out to your list. Now, honestly, if you're planning on building a business around this, you want them on your own list. You don't want them on the WordPress broadcast. But here nor there, one way or the other, they can subscribe to you and then they can get your video updates. It's going to take consistency. It's going to take time. It's going to take effort. So ask yourself, um, do I really want to do this? And if the answer is yes, then, you know, I highly recommend it. You can definitely build an audience. It, it's going to take a lot of effort, but it can be worth it if you have an end goal in mind. So really give it some thought. Give it some thought as to what you want to do with this once people subscribe. What do you want them to do? How do you want them to interact with you? Because, I, I you know, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you could, like, uh, sell political shows to political groups. I don't, I don't know. But I, I go there because, you know, I've created a lot of projects where I thought, this is going to be killer, and then it just hasn't worked out in any way, shape, or form that I'm able to benefit from all that work. So if you're going to put the work in, make sure you can benefit from it. That's a long answer, man. I hope it helps you out. Thank you so much for asking your question. And if you'd like to ask me a question, just go on over to the website, click on the Ask Tom link that's below any of the Ask Tom videos. You get to the SpeakPipe app, leave me your question, or if you can't get that to work for some reason, email me at info at learn-ventriloquism.com and make sure you put in the email Ask Tom so that I know it's for this video series. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll hope to see you next time on Ask Tom.